Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now I've been asked, what's the fastest blanket you can make? So the fastest one that I do, I, I just call it a loopy blanket because that's exactly what it is. Now the wool I'm using is called Yarn Fair and it's from Wilco. Just your, it was only 99 pence a ball. And the blue is called Yarn Fair Tootsie. That's the blue one. So this is the blue wool. I'm going to do another blue one. So that's that one. And the other one's just the white. So that, that again was from Wilco. And I got it for 99 pence. And you can go onto wilco.com and you can get your wool delivered, by the way, as well. So I've got my four strands of wool. And as you know by now, it's four strands. You can either use 50 gram balls or you can use 100 gram balls. It's up to you what size of ball you will you use. But you need, to, I'm, I'm using four strands at once. And this is just white, this is white. So that's just your basic yarn fair. And I'm just using up my scraps of wool. So I'm going to go up and down five times. Now it is, it will be thick enough. Don't worry that, oh, it's not got the same amount of lines on as a traditional one. We're not doing a traditional one. This one will be fine. You can adjust it to whatever way you want. You can make it thicker or you can even make it thinner for the summer. Especially if you're going to use these as pram toppers to decorate the top of a pram. Now these blankets are not for wrapping children in. Very small children can't regulate their temperature very well. So don't make these big enough to wrap a child in. You can use them for throws and things so when the children get a little bit bigger. You can make bigger ones for that. You can make comforters with them. That kind of thing. Now a lot of people say to me your frame is very small this is a demonstration size this size will fit inside like pet baskets it will fit on top of your children's doll prams they make excellent pet rugs my my mutley and my cat love sleeping on these type of rugs they're really warm they really like it and there's mutley there <laughs> he's having a little sniff no don't eat that my old stand broke so rose and gill hill sent me a new one so this is the actual stand that they sell to go with this type of frame and your nail frames now rose and gill hill they will make your frame to any specification that you want but they do have standard sizes they come in this new peg type and they come with nails it's up to you which ones you buy and i would recommend you get a stand it's so so much easier and much more comfortable on your back to actually have a stand have your loom on a stand so get this blanket done it's really quick so we're going to go up and down the pegs five times so that's one two three, four, and five, and back down. Now when you come down, go to this side of your peg, bring it along to the next peg. So don't worry about this part, we'll deal with that at the end. Now again, up and down five times. One, two, three, four, and five. Again, go to that side and go to your next peg. Now, I'm going to do that to all my pegs. Don't wind it too tight, especially if you've got these wooden ones. Don't wind too tight. You want to be able to get it off. So I'm going to do all my pegs up and down five times, and then I'll come back. So now I've done my five rounds up and down my pegs. I'm just going to go across to this one. You don't even need to go around the corner. You just need to go across to this one. Now this saves a little bit of wool as well because you're not doing all of this. If you want to do a frill, it will turn out nice because this one, I just cut the frill and the frill is still... 
the frill is still about two inches long. So I'm just going to do the same on the diagonal five times, one, two, three, four, and five. Just push it down. I don't wind it too tight. Then we'll go up to the next one and five again, all the way up to three, four, and five, push it down, move to the next one. Now I'm going to do my five rounds just back and forward like that and I'll come back and I'll show you what it's like. Don't worry about this piece here, these little lines that are going up here and along this side. I'll show you how to sort that out so that you don't see those. So don't worry about that. Now what we're going to do is, I'm literally running around, I'm going to tie my blue wool on here and I'm going to do the same. I've got my four strands of wool and I'm going to go up and down five times again. Now, now sometimes you can get wool that's thicker than others so you may need to adjust it. If you don't want a thick blanket, just put four up and down on and four along the way. But for this one, I'm going to do five up and down that way and five along that way. Again, I'm going to tie my wool on here. I'm just going to tie it on. And up and down five times. One, two, three, four and five down to the next one and do the same do the same one two three four and five and then move along to your next one now you can use the scrap balls of wool for this and do it all different colors it's up to you you can do it all different colors or you can just keep it to the one colour or do whatever you like with it. It's your blanket, so you do it the way you want it. So I'm going to do my five up and down each peg and my five along that way, each way. And I'll come back and show you what to do next. So I've got all my lines on. I've got five in the blue going up and down and five going that way. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn it around and I'm going to tie it. I'm just going to tie it all the way you normally tie any other blanket. I will still tie along my edges twice. I will tie each section around the edge twice. I don't want them pulling out. Even though it's going to be a loops, I don't want them pulling out through the blanket. So I'll get this tied up and then I'll come and show you how to finish it off so you've got your loops all nice and neat. And this is going to be a really, really lovely little loopy blanket. So as you can see, I've got my blanket all tied and I've got my nice loops at the top, under at the side. I'm going to show you how to deal with those. Very easy. Now it's really fast to do this blanket. It's really quick to wind it on. So the time it takes you to sort these equals the amount of a normal blanket. There's no full rounds that you have to do. You're just going up and down and up and down really fast, really quick. Then tie up your blanket. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to slip it off the frame. I found it's easier just to slide it off. Now if you've got nails, just get yourself a pokey tool and then just poke it over the top of your nails. And the best way to get it off is just to bring it all up near to the top, like this. Just bring it all up to the top. We'll deal with any ends that we have in a moment and we'll have this all nice and loopy.
So it just comes off just like that. And toppers that you make, make sure you tie your edges in twice. It's for safety. Now what I'm going to show you is this great little idea. Now you get yourself a darning needle with a quite a big eye. Get yourself a thin piece of wire. I've got a thin piece of wire here. I'm going to thread that through my darning needle. Just like that. So I've got a loop. Now any long lines that you have in your blanket, just sort it out, get it round to the right face there. Now put your long threads through that wire and pull it through your darning needle. Now that is a super fast way to do your darning needle. Now all we're going to do is we're going to stitch these little ends in. Just a stitch or two. Doesn't need to be completely sewn. This is going to make it all look symmetrical. I know some of you might say my god what a whole load of bother. It's not because you took so it was it's not because it was so quick to actually do the blanket, the tying, this part is really, really easy. All you need to do is put a little stitch in, just like that. Make sure you've not caught any of your loops. Get your scissors and snip it right down there. That takes your little end in. You're going to do the same with these loops. Now these big loops are the ones that went across from peg to peg. Now what you're going to do with it, you're going to do the same thing. Just cut it in the middle and we're going to thread it through our darning needle. Thread your wire through, take two of your pieces of your yarn or your thread or your wool, thread it onto your darning needle and put a stitch through. You're going to do that to all of these big loops, just the big loops. Cut them and put a little stitch through. If you find they're a little too short, push your needle through first. So just push your darning needle through there and bring it out somewhere around there and pull it through and then push it back at a different place and bring it out the other side. You're just going to stitch it in and then trim it. Just like that. All those long part, all those long ones. It won't take too long and you're going to it won't take too long, so I'm going to get that finished. I'm going to do all these long hoops, not the short hoops, just the long hoops. I'm going to tie them in and I'll come back and show you what the blanket's like. Loopy blanket all finished, and you can really see that diamond shape pattern that comes from doing it from peg to peg this it will still be a turnover you can still turn it over like that as well it's really really pretty and when that is on a pram it's really really nice now i'm going to show you the same one when i did the fringe you can cut the fringe if you want and this is what it's like with the fringe cut. So you can do this blanket either with the fringe or with the loops. I love the loops. I think the loops are absolutely brilliant. I love the loops. They're really, really pretty. And this one, I've did rounded corners on it. There is a tutorial on how to do the rounded corners on a blanket. I've done a tutorial for you so it's on my channel and you can really see the way the, that little diamond pattern shows up with doing it from peg to peg 
on both directions and don't do full rounds. It comes out amazing. It's beautiful. I really, really like it. So this is the fastest blanket I can make. It's the fastest one that you can make as well. As long as you tie your little loops in, take just take a few extra minutes and just please tie those longish loops in. And there we go. That's it. That's how you do little loops on your blanket. So go make yourself a few of these. They're absolutely beautiful. Do them in all different colours. You can alternate the colours on the top and along the bottom. Do it like the rainbow blanket. But try some loops and make yourself a little loopy. So thank you very much for watching. I'm just going to leave that there like that. So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe. Just click on that subscribe button. I really, really would appreciate it. And thank you very much for all your support. To all the 73,000 subscribers so far, thank you, thank you very much. So give the video the thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment of any... So if you want notified of any new videos I put on, then just click that little bell icon as well, right next to the subscribe button. So thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. So until the next time, happy crafting, and I'll see you all again soon. And I'll put that one there because that's the other one.